now that we've learned our new definitions and rules for section 5.3, it's time for us to put it all together with a mixed practice problem. This is the same mixed practice problem that we had involving hospital records and kidney transplant patients um, and the number of days that they stayed in the hospital shown in this probability distribution. If you remember, this is relative frequency, aka probability. This is empirical probability. And the sum of these probabilities was equal to 1. And I'll add just a little note that this is relative frequency which is probability. Oh, sorry, empirical probability. That's what I meant. Because it's from data. Just a little reminder. All right, why is it safe to assume that these patients are independent of each other? That's a big assumption, and we're going to make that assumption, but why is it safe to assume that? Well, because these are random patients that don't have anything to do with each other. So we are assuming these are random patients that are not related. which is a pretty reasonable assumption to make. We actually do this a lot in later chapters. We just kind of assume, eh, assume it's random, assume it's independent, it's fine. We'll get a little bit more into the weeds in later chapters about those assumptions, but nevertheless, we will make this assumption pretty regularly. You select two patients at random. Oh, there's a Q. Once you see that, you know that you're using the multiplication rule in some form. Might be the multiplication rule or it might be the at least one rule. We don't know which one yet, but since it's talking about both, it's multiplication rule. So we want both of them to have stayed four days. So two patients, we assume independent. So we want the probability that both stayed four days, which is the probability that the first one stayed four days times the probability that the second one stayed four days. Well, the probability of four days is 0.252. So this would be 0.252 for the first one times 0.252. Oh my goodness. There we have it. I had no space to write 0.252. Um, and then we're going to multiply them. Simple as that, right? Because it has both. Both is an and. It implies the first one and the second one. So let me take 0.252 squared, right? Because when you multiply something by itself, it's squaring it. So if you'd like, you could say 0.252 squared. Heck, you could say the probability of four days squared. That would also work which gets you 0 0.0635. All right, now what about the next question? You select three patients at random. What is the probability that the first one stayed seven days, the second one stayed three days, and the third one stayed five days? Well, that's the multiplication rule, right? So whenever you're doing more than one thing, it's going to be either the multiplication rule or the at least one rule. And the at least one rule is actually a multiplication rule with a lot of complements in it. Okay, so we want the probability that the first one stayed seven days and the second one stayed three days and the third one stayed five days. So it sounds more difficult than it actually is because what you do is you take the probability of seven days times the probability of three days times the probability of five days because you assume independence, all right? Since we assumed they were independent, you just multiply them. If I can spell independent correctly. All right, so point or zero three nine is the probability of seven. The probability of three is point one one eight. And the probability of 5 is 0. 0.441. So I will multiply those values. 
with my calculator. 0 0.039, I typed too fast for it, 0 0.118 times 0 0.441. And there you have it, 0 0.0020. And of course, it's an approximation, so at that point I should round. And there we have it. All right, last one on this page, and I see it from here. Hopefully you do too. At least one. Right? That means I'm going to use the not the multiplication rule, right? which we did here. We're going to use the multiplication rule, but hidden inside rule number five, the at least one rule. So this is rule number four up here for both of these, right? And then this one will be rule number five. But make sure you wrote it correctly. Make sure you fix that typo if you're in the fall of 2020. All right, how many patients are we selecting? We're selecting four patients. Okay, so that means we want the probability of at least one three. So the probability of at least one, three. According to that rule would be one minus the probability of not three to the n power, which for us, n is right here, n is four. So I'm gonna raise it to the fourth power right there. All right, I need to go find the probability of not three. So let me kind of go over here for one patient this time, because we're selecting patients, the probability of three is 0.118. So the probability of three complement, which is the probability of not three, same thing, would be one minus 0.118, which is 0.882. If you don't believe me, you're welcome to plug it into a calculator. All right, so that's what we'll put in here. So then we'll go one minus, 0.882 to the fourth power. All right, let me grab um, the calculator. So first of all, one minus 0 0.118, sure enough is that. And then I tape one minus 0.882, close parentheses, to the fourth. And there you have it, 0.3948. except I wrote, I was writing it backwards. So 3948. And if you'd like to see it in Desmos, just in case you're curious, it would be one minus 0 0.882 to the fourth. And there you have it, 3948. Simple as that. All right. So that shows you this is still the most difficult one because it involves this little side bit business over here. So you have to go figure that out. And please make sure you write the complement. So you want one minus the complement of three, right? Not three to the fourth power.